Professor Heather McGregor. I'm the Provost and Vice Principal of Harriet Watt University, Dubai. I only became an academic six years ago at the very advanced age of 54. So I'm a, a relatively new academic, but a very experienced manager, um, and of course a wife and a mother, uh, and even a grandmother. I'm very happy to be here today. I spent my, uh, my 20s working in communications, actually, um, and uh, working in uh, PR and communications, uh, but I specially focused on communications aimed at the financial community. I was about, I think about 16, I think, when somebody explained to me the inverse relationship between the rate of interest and the price of bonds, and I was completely transfixed. That was my eureka moment. I knew then that I was passionate about finance, and I, I focused on financial communication. And then as I got closer to 30, I thought, actually, I really want to be a financier. Instead of communicating to these people, I wanted to be the person. So I got an MBA, as I explained, and, and then for 10 years I was an investment banker, a stockbroker and an investment banker. And I worked all over the world. I worked for two years in Hong Kong, uh, two years in Singapore, two years in Tokyo. So I moved and moved uh, a lot in that time. And, and then I think there was a, I had a watershed moment in, in the year 2000 when I was in Mexico City doing a deal to buy uh, a seat on the Mexican Stock Exchange for my employer. And I just thought, I don't want to be here. I, I, want, I, want, I want more control over my own life. Uh, it was the school holidays. I wasn't with my children. I was in Mexico City. And I thought, I need to go home and, um, and become an entrepreneur and run my own business. So I went back to the UK and uh, put a bid in for a business that I'd always wanted to buy. And then I bought it and I became an entrepreneur for the next 17 years. Investing in the skills of the future is so important for everybody. I, it's interesting, the university was founded in 1821 to upskill people. But well, a couple of uh, businessmen in Edinburgh, you know, 200 years ago, couldn't get the skills they needed for the future. One of them had a clock and watch manufacturer and was manufacturing quite complicated time movement pieces. And he was complaining about the lack of skilled workers. And so he got together with his friend, they raised money by public subscription and invested in a night school so people could work in the day and upskill at night. So we started life building people's skills for the future. And here we are 200 years ago. So it's not a new, it's not a new phenomenon. Um, but we, we really focus on the two areas where we think we can add value in that area. One is in technology. So we turn out amazing engineers, um, design people. You know, the, these are what probably most people think of as the skills of the future. Um, but we also have a very strong business school. So think of us as the sort of almost like a mini MIT in many ways. It's, there's a big technology part and a, and a big business part. And we think that these are the main areas that will help to propel the future. I mean, we don't try and be a full service university. You can't study history of art with us, for instance. Um, but we are trying to focus in on the skills of the future. That said, if you ask any employer about the things they want from graduates. A lot of that is also about communication, interpersonal skills, um, emotional intelligence. You, know, you, you can have access to all the technology in the world, but if you don't communicate it, it's very difficult. You know, com coming here today, I was very reminded of that. You know, we're sitting here on the 33rd floor, I think, of this building, and I came up in a really brilliant, amazing lift. Um, but getting people to, in, lifts were invented before they could persuade people to get into them. Um, and actually what persuaded people to get into the very first lift was watching somebody getting into a lift and communicating it to other people. So if we're going to use the technology of the, the future, self-driving cars for instance, we've got to communicate why they're safe, what's going to happen with them. And, and so I think we're teaching people those skills too, the, the soft skills.
lifelong learning. I mean, that's the single biggest trend. And of course, as with many things, the UAE are streets ahead of that. If you look, for instance, at our postgraduate population here in, in, in the Dubai campus, the vast majority of these people are working and studying at the same time. And they are doing it part-time, you know, they're studying part-time as a result. So instead of getting a degree in nine months or a year, they're getting it over two years or sometimes more. And I think the ability to go backwards and forwards um, into education and then to upskill at regular pace and to be able to facilitate that, I think that's, those are the future trends of education. Speaking personally, uh, the last degree I did on a full-time basis was my undergraduate degree. I, I did my MBA uh, at the London Business School while working full-time and starting a, a family. For, for which I would say, by the way, don't try this at home. Okay. It's, it's, not, it's not for the faint-hearted, but somehow I didn't learn my lesson and I went on later on, I went back and did my PhD and I also um, did that while working full-time as an investment banker and adding to my family. So, so I really, you know, I almost wonder whether I'd really learnt my lesson from the master's degree. Um, and then most recently during Covid, even at a very advanced age and not producing any children, I, I, went, I, I studied and qualified as an accountant. I'm, a newly, I'm probably the newest qualified accountant you will meet because I only qualified in February. Uh, and I qualified as a management accountant this year. So, so for me, it's been a, an amazing lifelong journey, but I think that's going to be very much the trend of the future. Uh, so I'm very, very proud to lead the Dubai campus. It's been here 17 years. We, we've had a presence in the UAE, and my single most overriding goal is to um, enhance the experience of, of the students and the staff. Um, we want to be an employer of choice and we want to be a higher education provider of choice and I think this is an amazing place to run a university. It's, it's so safe as an environment, um, it, it, it's full of energy and life, the UAE. So I'm very excited to be here and I would like to really to grow our student experience and my absolute goal is that our students should develop a strong sense of purpose while they are with us so that when they leave they know what the impact is they want to make on the world and to go out and be true global citizens. So if, if I can expand our purpose-led education philosophy, that's what I will be wanting to do.